Yeah, baby, what's going on, man? Look, everybody, it's Frank the UPS guy. Frank, say say something nice to everybody. Uh, what do you want to hear? Just say, uh, yeah, hey, the best. Oh, that's, that. that's a good one. I like that. <laughs> Frank the UPS guy. Man, that's a nice guy. Let's test it a little bit more to see if it's just the cable that's been jigged wrong or do I need to do something in there? I'm gonna take some, I'm gonna run it, take these pliers and pull on this engagement cable. See if the rear wheels spin. That is if it starts again. Looks like the cable is seized. You pull on it and pull on it, and it doesn't even move. So the, the seized part of it is under there. Nothing is engaging the PTO to turn the uh, pulley for the belt to drive the, um, or to engage the uh, self propulsion in the rear. So I have to flip it on its side to see. So not only is the cable seized inside the cable, right? The wire is seized in the cable, it won't move, right? So it won't engage the gearbox to move upwards, to pull the pulley back, to tighten the tension of the belt that's around the crankshaft, right? Not only that, but the belt is not even attached to the pulley on the rear. And do you think you can get your hand in there to try to get the belt back onto the pulley? No, of course not. How else do you think you can get access to that area? It's like incredible. What am I gonna do, drop the entire axle? So make any sense. So it looks like you have to take off both wheels so that you can get the two bolts over here where there's a plastic baffle that separates the blades from this area. I think if you take the black plastic baffle out, the separator, you could actually have access to everything there. I'm gonna try that. I'm not gonna. These things right here. You loosen these two right here, there's like a black baffle. Gotta get the other side too. Yeah, the gears are good. All right, let's see if that baffle comes out. This is the plastic baffle I was talking about. Looks like it's attached to the rear of the one, two. Rusty. Uh -huh. Look at that. Today I learned something. This is like the same thing as a Toro recycler. Uh, they also make this model, I believe, the Lawn Boy. So, uh, now I have access to everything here. That's cool. I loosen the uh, drive belt from the top and I just loosen the spring of the mechanism. Pulling the spring out, and as you can see, it's seized. It won't move in or out. So I need a new cable for this. In the meantime, I'm going to You guys see that? As you can see, the belt has come off of the pulley. That spring attaches to this thing here. And as you pull it, you can see the pulley moves backwards and puts tension on the belt underneath this belt cover. It goes around the pulley for the crankshaft it spins, turns the pulley, and looks like the transmission works. So it looks like I need to find a belt, uh, I'm sorry, a um, cable 
reattach this belt onto the pulley, put the baffle back on, put the wheels back on, and it should work. I found out that the, the belt, the V part of it, is on the outer side, and the flat part is on the inner side. But over here, it's right, which means it's flipped in here. So I have to take this off just to see. That's right, it's about that time again. Four months, and I had to uh, repump my cesspool again. So, $550 later, get my cesspool pumped. So apparently, my cesspool is over 20 years old, and the ground is now compacted so much that the water won't drain out. So guess what? I might have to get a new septic system in the near future. Anyway, uh, three bolts to remove this cover. So now I have full access to the belt and to this. And this was all bent. And now I can uh, tangle it and attach this back onto the pulley. So I was just digging in my big box of cables and stuff from lawnmowers that I took apart in the past. I save all the cables that work. And it looks like, I'm not sure, but it looks like I have the same exact cable I need for it. How about that, huh? No, it looks kind of short, though. I'm going to take this, this mess off. Jigging. I'm guilty of some jigging once in a while, too, so I'm not going to criticize. So I've installed the drive cable, seems to work. Just hope the gearbox is not stripped. And uh, I rejig this so that it looks better. I'm not gonna get too much for this uh, lawnmower, maybe 80 bucks or something. Cause it's, uh, you know, doesn't have a bag and uh, it's kind of like in a little rough shape around the body. I'm gonna put all the wheels back now. starts up again and if the propulsion works.
worked for a second, and then I think the belt slipped off again. That's a pain. But I'm gonna see what happens tomorrow. I'm trying to fix it again. But uh, either way, finding this on the street, thanks to Frank, the UPS guy, replacing the primer assembly for the auto choke. It was filled with water, pushed out all the water. Didn't do a carb clean, seems to run just fine. Fixed the bail handle cable and the engagement handle uh, cable for the drive. Seems to run pretty well, but uh, I'll mess with the drive cable a little bit more, see why the belt keeps slipping off, you know. Other than that, I think the gearbox works. So we'll figure that out tomorrow. Couldn't stand it, I had to do it. Can't wait until tomorrow. I wanted to know why this belt kept slipping off. The belt is okay, but it's kind of stretched. So I think that's the reason why, is because it's stretched, right? This thing has to pull up more. You have to pull more for it to get the tension. As you're pulling up more like that, it's supposed to be like this. But if you're pulling up too much, it goes like that, right? And as a result, it hits the lip and comes off like this. So the belt has to be tighter, if you will, so that you, when you're engaging it, you're only going like that and not like this. And if you do that, the belt will come off the bottom. So I'm gonna to try to find a shorter, better conditioned belt, which means that when I do this, I don't ha it ha doesn't have to go all the way back and this will slip off. I think that's why. I found this one that was about a quarter of an inch shorter. It's also in better shape, and this is made out of Kevlar. You could tell. It's not just rubber. It's Kevlar. So I'm going to try to put all this stuff back again. Maybe it'll be better. Okay. I just put everything back again. Kind of a pain in the butt, but I was determined to get it done, and I'm understanding the way it works better. I get a lot of these, so it's good to know. So let's try and start it up to see if the self explosion works. New belt. Oh, you know what I did? I unplugged the uh, ignition coil so I don't chop my hand off by accident, you know? It's good practice. Just gotta remember to pull back. It's very strong. That's the only real reason that I continued to try to fix it because I felt that the gears in the transmission was very good. So self propulsion is gonna work well. You gotta try to figure it out, you know? If it was stripping or jiggly like that, then I say forget about it because probably the worm gear inside was all trashed. But I could feel that this transmission was good. So I took the extra time to change the belt and what a pain it, the butt it was to change the belt. Because you got to take the, the keepers off of the crankshaft one. Uh, that both bolts holding that is holding two of the three engine bolts on here. So the engine was kind of loose when I loosened those two just to get the belt off. Same goes for the bracket that is attached to the PTO cable. You have to remove that 
with these uh, square screws, and which I stripped when I had to replace it. But it has the square ones, you know what I'm saying? The kind that you drive deck bolts into. I mean, that was a pain in the butt. But uh, I'm glad I got it figured out. I had plenty of belts, so I just threw a nice Kevlar strong belt in there. It was shorter, so when you engaged it, the lever didn't have to go like that. If it goes like that, and it's not completely vertical, 90 degrees, right? Uh, and if it goes like this, it means that the belt is being slipped off the bottom, see? And that's what was happening. So that the belt was stretched so long that it had to pull more to get it to engage. When you pull it more, it's no longer 90 degrees, rather it's like that. And so the belt will slip right off the pulley. Got this lawnmower for free. Self-propelled rear. Fix the belts. Ah, I need to add Earl. All the work I'm doing to this thing today, I'm actually going to do an oil change. No way, Henry, you don't care about stuff like that. Yeah, well, this oil is like death. It's literally like black death, and there's not much of it left. I'm just gonna dump the rest of it out and put some new SAE 30 Plus in here. I'm gonna put some SAE 30 Plus for my friends over at Lucas Oil Products. Kohler engines, uh, you have to look at it. Um, tractor Kohler engines, such as the Kohler Command, um, Kohler Courage, you actually have to put in 10W30. Because this is a lawnmower engine, summer machine, I'm gonna put 20 ounces of this SAE 30 weight for temperatures above 32 degrees Fahrenheit. ready to sell for like 80 bucks actually self propulsion working really well rear maybe a hundred bucks good engine could use a bag but 100 bucks or 80 you know found it on the street I actually did a lot of work to this if you haven't noticed this video is kind of long for a push mower you know but I wanted to straighten out the self propulsion it didn't make me feel good if I just didn't do it you know and the oil was terrible, so I can't avoid doing it. I have to do it. But uh, thanks all for joining me on this longer episode of a lawn boy found on the street, thanks to Frank the UPS guy. A free mower, didn't spend any money on it other than the stuff that I had on hand. So maybe I'll get 80 to 100 bucks out of it when the spring rolls around. Thanks a lot for joining me on today's episode. We'll see you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers. Why you make friends with your UPS guy. Henry, I gotta go. I'll see you next time on Mowers and Blowers. Hey, if you guys enjoyed the video, remember to give me a like. Also, comment below. Subscribe. Remember, it doesn't cost anything to subscribe. It's free, right? Also, hit that little bell. That way you'll get post notifications whenever there's a new video and you won't miss out on any of them. Remember to follow my Instagram and Facebook, as well as if you'd like to donate a dollar or two, paypal.me slash mowers and blowers. Really appreciate all the support. Also, to keep the videos coming every day, support the channel. Bye.